I'm going to do the bearing upgrade from the small bearings to large bearings. And we are also going to do the Y carriage plate upgrade. This is the original plate. This is the new, much, much thicker plate. And I also took the chance to upgrade these. As you can see, I used a locking M3 nut with a fiber washer. So now these are locked into place on there, so I don't have to worry about that part coming loose. Should reduce the spin in these. Also, if you think about this in advance, replace these with something better. These strip really easy. They're a real mild steel or something like that. All three, three of the four are stripped a little bit to some extent. Uh, first step is to remove that plate. Um, you can't pull it off. It's attached permanently with wires, but you can separate it. And then you come up here, and you, um, I disconnected all the screws inside. They, four for each of these and the two that go into this right here your Y belt and then up front here you take these two out which is those two right there and then you loosen that and you can very gently bend this up here and slide all the bits off you slide everything out put those screws back in there so you don't lose them and then what you do is if you don't have a pair of nipple pliers or C-clip E-clip pliers if you get a cheap set of it's like four bucks for a cheap set of it comes in like this a package like this in walmart it comes with the needle nose and the snips well these needle nose fit in eclipse for compression and expansion so you can pop them in there like this and squeeze to get them out and push to get them off here's what the original looks like and here's what the updated one will look like now one problem people envision is that Y end stop switch right there. People think seem to think that that will get in the way. Um, that this bearing will hit it. I think they might be right, but I think I can move that out of the way or bend that out of the way so it doesn't hit this because it's, it's pretty close. Uh, now to get this out is actually pretty easy. I'm going to try to do this on camera. You put the pliers in there. Squeeze and remove. This is going to be hard to do with one hand. Yeah, I can't do it with one hand. But you squeeze, remove, and then you slide the bearing out. You have to use the new clips. Put one on first like I did. So you get one of them on. Put a rubber O-ring on. Then you slide it through the bearing lock. And you put the new O-ring on and the new one on. And you end up like this. New clip on, you end up like that. This kit is short. One of these. I need six, it only comes with five. Unless you're intended to not use both bearing blocks? I don't know, I guess I'll find out when I get to that stage. The next thing you need to do is grab yourself a couple of M3 nuts and bolts and bolt your new plate to your old plate and use it as a template. Uh, make sure if you notice that this has holes in it, if they kind of line up with the holes on your existing plate, flip it around so they don't. And you use that as a guide to drill the new holes. So those four there in the center are new. Those four there and those four there are new. And the two closer together holes are new. I used a 3 16 inch drill bit. And I drilled out all the holes. And cleaned it up a little bit. And now I have my new much, much thicker plate. Look at the thickness difference in these plates. I mean, this is like stupid crazy how big a difference that is. Look at that. It's literally 100% thicker. Now... A problem you're going to have with longer bearings is your Y end stop. The little screw that goes through the Y end stop hits the housing. So what you do is you put a pair of pliers on here very gently and you bend this toward here a little bit. You can see I have mine angled now. See it's about a 20 degree angle. And now it clears the end stop. And the end stop still hits where it needs to hit to do its thing. More to come. Um, lift up the rod again. Put your little end clamps in. Screw them in place. After you screw them in place, tighten up your grub screw. Same thing over here after you slide your bearings on. I thought of swapping this over here and this over here so they wouldn't hit the end stop. And then I realized that needs to hit the end stop. <laughs> That's why I came up with the little bend it mod down there. So now the trick is to put the new plate on and affix all the hardware. 
So now, can I get this bad boy bolted in? And I'll have a much, much stronger base plate. Next, screw these four in, these four in, just finger tight, they should spin right in. Okay, the next thing you do is you gotta get your, um, I don't know what that's called, that thing for the Y belt. That has to be screwed in. So what you do is you pick it up through here, and you reach in here with your finger, and you hold it in place. And you move it around until you see the hole, and you put one screw in. Once you have that, you're good. You can let it go and screw the rest of your screws in. And I got part of the Z-brace kit installed. I got the front feet, the rear feet, and I got the vertical pieces here. I still have to make adapters to convert these from the expected 5 16 inch bolt to the quarter inch bolts that they used in the kit that I got. I think that's what that little insert is for to convert from quarter to 5 16 So that's what I have to make still. And I need the printer to do that. Um, you can see the new bed. It came out very, very nice. I had to put transfer tape between the silicone and the, and the bed to secure it because um, sometimes the print, uh, sometimes this likes to bow up the actual PEI and sometimes the it hits the print hard enough to knock it off so now it's secured on there better I did not do these bearings they look very involved to change and I just wasn't up for that that's that's probably hour and a half two hour process to disassemble the components in there and the components in there and to get it back together correctly so I was like yeah I'm gonna wait and do that later <laughs> um, what's the next step Oh, I'm going to take apart the back of this so I can change the fan to a quieter, larger fan instead of the noisy behemoth that's in there now. So that'll be my next step. And here I'm printing a new back plate so I can put an 80 millimeter fan. Notice something? Have you watched any of my latest videos? You know how quiet it is? <laughs> I replaced the fan with this 80 millimeter ultra quiet fan. I took off the housing around the power supply, just got rid of it. This is not grounding anything and there's nothing in there that's going to short on it. Maybe later on I'll make a plastic net version of this just to, you know, just in case you stick your finger in there you don't want to you know, do something stupid. Plus I'll have a place to put that. So I'll probably remake this in plastic with you know, a screen type thing. But um, here's the back plate that's going to mount that fan and the plug. It's printing pretty good so far. I will have more tomorrow as I finish the upgrades.